getting ready for the Dirt Kings final. The DXR Dirt Kings final, 2019, 10 seconds till they go. It is Ongaro on pole. Lutz, Berton, Figueredo, Boots and Kilic are behind him. And they are away. And thankfully the timing screen has changed. So off we go. And they fly around the first corner. And in the lead, it is David Iongaro already with a few yards, which he's taken out from Lutz. Third place is Berton. They've gone off in order. Fourth place will be Figueredo. And fifth will be the car of Elliot Boots. And straight out of the block. This is what Berton did every single time in the heat. He just was so, so quick out of the block. 39.4. Obviously, he got a bit of advantage. And Berton has clipped in third. So Ongaro looks Burton. We are with Ongaro. The young Italian Phenom, they call him. The associated driver with the LRP engine, the world champion. And he's pulled out a lead in the first but of 1.38 seconds. And behind him, Ryan Lutz now is gathering himself and working out what on earth he can do about him. As I said before, on an individual lap, all these drivers in the top 10 are as quick as David Ongaro. Unfortunately, they're not as quick as David Ongaro over 10 laps, because he can do 10 laps the same speed. That time round, it was a 31 9 against 33, so four tenths more eked out by Ongaro. Oh, he's lucky there, had a uh, razor light control, took the car, it was arching like it was going to roll over and put it flat down. So, Ongaro turning back up onto the step up, he's going to come through the chicane before he goes on to the Nemo Racing Burn, hitting the low line. He'll come back through the, fire himself through the switchback that takes you over the timing scoring loop here before he goes up the main straight, past pit in. Goes to the sharp right, right hand turn and into the dip. Fires up through the bullet jump and comes underneath camera two for dropping into the uh, hidden dip and then coming on to the washboard section. Down up six feet on the uh, Marxist jump before he comes to the DXR turn and then back away again. And that's a lap. And then that last lap, he gained nearly a second on look. So his lead now is three seconds in two minutes. Scampering away would be the uh, the feeling that uh, Ongaro is giving everyone here. But now, don't forget, these are long races, anything can happen. Car looking beautifully balanced. Oh, he's so, so balanced, he can, he can take liberties with it. It was slightly turning as he threw, flew through the air. Behind him, the battle is being drawn. And what we'll do now is we'll drop back to Ryan Lutz. So we'll go back to the second car and see what he can do about catching up to Ongaro. My guess is not an awful lot unless Ongaro has a problem. But it looks like we could have a quite tasty battle between Lutz and Burton. There's only a second between him. Burton in the background is here with the yellow car. Lutz, who converted from Techno to Agama chassis over the winter. Still getting used to his new ride. Very affable, tall American. That time round actually managed to gain three tenths of a second back on our leader, Ongaro. And as you can see, Burton running in his boot tails at 1.34 seconds behind. Behind them is Boots, three seconds back. Kanas, the second behind that. Then Bur Burak Kilic, Figueredo, not doing as well in this race as in the semi. Zanchatin in eighth. Hurst in ninth. Burke and Kilic in tenth. And they fire down the straight again. That time round, it was a six-tenth game for Ongaro. Burton reined in, looked slightly, so the battle of the second could soon be joined. Lutz flies. Burton getting closer. Now the question now comes about pit stops. Are they all going to run to nine minutes and just do four pit stops or will some have to stop earlier and do five? If you run nine minutes, with nine, 18, 27 and 36 minutes and it all divides nicely 45 minutes into five parts. But obviously if you are uh, having to uh, run seven and a half minutes you need to let you stop. Slightly eked out the lead that time round. Did uh, Lutz, and I think actually Ongaro lost some of his little. Ongaro's made a little bit, had a little bit of a bobble. So Ongaro's lead's gonna come down this time from the 3.1, as you saw him just coming up, but there's Ongaro. So Ongaro's had a mistake in this one. And that's the lead come back. So one, two, and three in the same frame. Ongaro's lap time was a 34.7. Yeah, it lost two and a half seconds. His lead got down to 1.27 seconds, and it's only 0.84 to Burton. So all three cars in the same frame after four minutes and 20 seconds. Lutz is the car. Oh, and Lutz has gone. And so they've both got in sympathy with each other. So Ongaro gets a bonus there because Lutz made a mistake. And it's like Burton panicked to try and avoid the car and took the whole thing again. Let's see that happen again. So over the washboard, 
Lutz went a little bit wide, and it, it's the penalty one that catches them. That's it. Didn't get the land. Land in the front, locked. And then in seeing that, I think Burton went, oh my, what the heck's going on there? And reacted badly. And so that effectively means they've all back lost what they gained the previous lap. Burton lost massively, had a 38 second lap there. So Lutz still sticking in seconds. He goes up and over the Marxist jump. He's now back to being four seconds behind. And this is the problem, really. If you're going to have a chance of beating Ongaro here, you've got to make zero mistakes. Right, can we just let Lutz go through and get the next car, which is Berton, the yellow car. It should be. Oh, it's not. It's, he's, he's dropped out, has he? Is that a lapped car? That next car, no, that is the eight car of Canas. So we'll pick up the eight car of Canas. Go one car forward, Frank, to the eight car of Canas. I think Berton may have had a problem, may have stopped for fuel. No, Berton's dropping down the order to seventh, I think, so he may have had a second problem on the following lap. So Burton, two mistakes. This is one car of Canas with the S works. Also, Boots had issues as well. I don't think anyone has stopped yet, so uh, this is just how it is. Canas now in third, with Burak Kilic in fourth. Figueredo in fifth, Hurst in sixth, Ricky Burton in seventh, and Elliot Boots in eighth. As we get close to people we think about making their first stop if they're doing 7.30s, but not if they're doing 9. So Kanas goes round on his own. He is ahead of Burak Kulic by about a tenth of a second. Ongaro leads by 3.2 seconds. He lost four tenths that last lap. Ricardo Burton a long way back and in a lot of traffic at the moment with uh, a bit of time. So let's just drop back one more. We'll pick up Burak Kilic, who should be just behind him. There's Burak, putting a good performance here, the Kilic brothers, the uh, older of the Kilic brothers. Actually, the younger, isn't it? The Burak's come through, sorry. Burkin. There's the older one, sorry, Burak's the older one. I'll keep going around the circle. But the older, with the uh, his blue and white colours, been running for a long time. So Burak. In fourth, the gap between first and second has come down to 2.56 seconds. They did almost exactly the same last lap, and point one. in comes the first pit stop. So, first thing we already know is that Burak Kilic is on a seven and a half minute strategy as another car comes in behind him. So, we've got a couple of a lot of cars now are coming in. Got an issue with one of the cars there. So, some of the cars are back markers. So they're definitely doing seven and a halves. The Pavot comes in. I'm just looking out the window. And Ongaro is doing it, and so is Lutz. So Ongaro and Lutz are all doing the seven and a half minutes. Is anybody going to try and do nine minutes? The answer appears to be no, because Kanas is also going in. So everyone's decided that nine minutes is not doable, and seven and a half minutes is much better, so run a five-stop race. So Burak being the first one in will now reap the rewards. And Lutz lost a bit of time on that in-lap. And this is the point where it begins to get slightly confusing, because everybody's doing everybody. So let's go and join our leader, who's about to go to the main straight, Angaro, in the silver and the orange car at the top corner now. As the first steps of stops unwind, and Angaro now has a 3.34 second lead on Lutz. And Lutz, Lutz keeping him honest. In the semi-final, he was gaining a, you know, more than a second a lap on the entire field. So Lutz keeping him honest with 3.34 behind after 8 minutes and 23 seconds of the 45 minutes. Canas back a further seven. Kilic quite close, Canas, Figueredo, and the rest of them kind of got little comfortable gaps. A couple of seconds to Boots, a couple of seconds to Burton, a couple of seconds to Crank, a couple of seconds to Skidmore. So, Ongaro, now to about market, he puts a lap on James and Pavot in 14th. Always, always looks quite close, but in terrible happening, it never does. The car pitter patters over the washboard, drops down, and turns away from us before up the step up, which is incredibly hard. When you look at it for real, that is a very, very high jump. And just like last night's late, semi, late early finals, the sun is streaming in from the side of the, uh, the building here at the Harper Adams Agricultural College and University in Telford in Shropshire, in the middle of England, about 50 miles from Birmingham. We've seen you down there for a very long time, didn't we? Last time round, 31.9 was this man, David Ongaro, 31.32.2 for Lutz, lost three tenths. Still about an accident ahead, or an accident away. Canas has dropped off Lutz. Burton's not really come back after those two problems early on. No one really surprised to see this happening at the moment, but there's still 
35 minutes to go. And that car is so well balanced and so flat on the back straight. Problem behind, I think that was maybe Neil Cragg having a nightmare and dropping back a lap. There are several cars which are painted the same way as Neil Cragg's car, as we found out, in yellow and green. So now the lead is four seconds. This looks has dropped back a little bit further. When uh, Ongaro gets underneath you, Frank, you let him go and let's pick up Ryan Lutz, who's the pink and blue car. It'll be four seconds before he turns up in second place. And there he is, mired in the bit of traffic, which may have been the reason why he lost some time. That time round, he lost a further second because Ongaro stuck in a 31.65. So Ongaro now is pulling the pin. Let himself settle to the first tank full and now absolutely pulling the pin in the second tank full. 5.37 seconds ahead. Still Kanat in third. Kilic in, Burek Kilic in fourth. Figueredo now beginning to show more of the semi-final form up to fifth. Boots still getting used to his new car in sixth. Johnny Skidmore in seventh. Jack Hurst in eighth. Burton off the good start down to ninth. Another car needs to get out of the way. That I think may have been Zanchatin actually. So Zanchatin not really uh, enjoying his time either here at the moment with the techno. Whereas the new Agama for Lutz is suiting him as well as anybody apart from Ongaro. So Lutz flies around. Last time round, he actually gained six tenths on uh, Ongaro. But I think some of this is traffic affected. So we're down about 20 laps. And at the end of 21 laps, Lutz is how far behind? Four seconds. So he's losing a 0.2 of a second a lap effectively. He has managed to gain a bit back this time. Now this track is one of the more American style tracks. They should favour in some ways, Lutz, but of course, Ongara is the world champion and wins on anything. There'll be a question mark for all those who are trying to race him in uh, Manila in uh, two weeks' time. How are they going to beat him in RCGP? Because that's an, uh, an outdoor track in this style, much hotter. So, so that was going to set a big challenge, even though it's been lovely weather here and very un Harper Adams like weather. But it peaked at 21 in Manila in two weeks' time. It's going to be about 38 degrees. But Lutz, two on his car, qualified second, out of the first semi-final. Hops down, lost another half second that last lap. And I would imagine he has the experience to be doing just his own thing at the moment. Just turning laps, hoping for the best, not pushing anything, making it work for him as he reached the 12-minute mark. That lap round, he gained a tenth. So he has a lap where he gained, loses four tenths, then he gains a tenth, but the net effect is he's lost three tenths over two laps. Kanas still third. Burekulic is fourth. Looks now going up onto the step-up, looking where Ongar. Ongar is still sh shooting away. He's going to take two cars this lap, so my guess is the gap will come down as he's lapped both the seven and the eight. So he's lapped both Neil Cragg and, uh, not the eight, it must have been the ten, of, of Burke and Kilic. And indeed, it was a gain there of uh, 1.3 seconds for Lutz. But that's really because uh, Ongaro is stuck in traffic. And that's convenient, the traffic's thrown itself off the track. So Lutz gets a free pass in the first bit of traffic. And then continues round. We have 3.15, the next bit of traffic, which I think is, uh, yeah, that's Burke and Kilic. So still two cars between him and Ongaro. Ongaro bunged on a 31.97 there, 32.18 for the man we're with, Lutz, chasing. He needs to do this bit of traffic. We just don't, don't quite see Ongaro in the same shot. Those two cars you can see are back markers. With the lead out in 3.43 seconds. It needs to be about two and a half before we can see him in the same shot. He might get a little glimpse. No, those are the back markers again. You can get a glimpse there as uh, a 31 4 that time round. Ongaro probably realised that you know, the gap was getting a bit uncomfortable. Just stuck down a 31 4 8 against a 32 3. So turning off the laps, not doing an awful lot of good. Gets through another piece of traffic. Let's see if we can uh, I'll try and see if we can find car four of Figueredo, because he's in a bit of a battle with Boots, or was at one point. I'm 
not sure if he still is, to be honest. And then coming up now, getting close to the second stop. And uh, what's happened there? The excitement, it was a 13 that went over. The leaders have got right together, so it's gone right, first and second are right together. There was a, the Chevrolet was looking for a different car, they come in the pit there, it's a race to the pit stops. Lutz and Ongaro both in the field at the same time. Up, down, drop, who's going to be first? It's just about the same, fantastic pit stopping there by the two of them. A problem from Ongaro on the in lap and suddenly Lutz was right behind them as I was looking elsewhere for Figueroa, I couldn't see him because these two had having a bit of a row of their own. Good driving there, I think from Matt Lewis to let them both through, but already Ongaro's got, hang on, a little bit too close now, I'm going to get away from them, but Lutz making this a much closer uh, battle than we thought as we were a quarter of the way through. But already in this lap, what was a yard and a half has gone to a second half as Ongaro has just scampered out. He's so good on those fresh laps. 38-4 against 39-4. That includes the pit stop, but the pit stops are basically identical. So Lutz now has to try and get hold of Ongaro, who can see in front of frame and kind of lose a little bit of time going around the corner on the second digit before going over the washboard. Lutz now has to try and apply some pressure to the young Italian. And it seems mostly that it's traffic that's causing problems. We're now with Ongaro. So we move forward to Ongaro. Now about to go across the start finish. He's got two bits of traffic in front of him. Will they peel off in the pit lane? Conveniently. No, they haven't. They've carried on being in front of him. I believe that's Ricardo Burton is about to lap. So Burton's race has disintegrated the past 10 minutes. Lutz lost another... No time at all. They had exactly the same lap that last time. 1.73 seconds behind. And now Ongaro will have his sights taken by Burton. And in front of Burton is the uh, 13 car of Johnny Skidmore. And they are racing. Skidmore and Burton are racing for position. They're racing. Oh, and Skidmore right other side. They are racing for position seven and eight. And Burton's just got seven back again. But. Ongaro, he's got round one of them, I don't think unsighted by them, he's got round one of them, and in the same time he gained the second on Lutz last time round, so he's, he's carving through the traffic, and that was lucky. Berton made a mistake and he got a free pass, but lucky you make your own luck by being good. And so, having been closed to within half a second, Ongaro now has eased it back out again to three, almost immediately, this time round, the score for Ongaro is 32-1, as he had to get past some traffic, and it's 32-2 for Lutz. Now, any second now they're going to the unknown because no one's gone more than 20 minutes. And we start going to what's going to happen with tyre wear. We, historically, though, it's not been a massive issue here at Harper Adams on this clay surface. We've kind of known he had a slightly different compound. And Ongaro shoots away. Putting the foot down. Hopping up and through, getting a lap. Is that putting a lap on Elite Boots? I think it is. So he's now lapped Boots after 18 minutes. Lutz is taking it too. And in fairness, Kanas actually is holding on after being dropped. He's now only eight seconds off the lead, Kanas. So possibly he can make a comeback and come back towards Lutz, who's three seconds back of this battle. Having gone by Boots on Garo. But can we wait now for Lutz? So it's a three-second wait. There is Lutz. He's got some traffic in between. I think it was less than three seconds, but there's traffic involved. And the lead changes and drops down to 2.6. Yeah, there was a bit visually a bit less, but it's very traffic effective. But Lutz absolutely keeping the boy honest here. Not that car. That one. That's right. The number two car of Ryan Lutz. 2.7 seconds on Garo, though has cleared more traffic than he has. Ongaro's got past Boots. Lutz has not. No, I don't think he's massively lost much time this lap either. 32 6. No, he's going 6 tenths. So a uh, couple of good laps for Lutz here. And he's back in within two seconds. He does have Boots in between them, which is going to be an unsighting situation. He actually did lose a little bit of time there, landing off the bottom of the bullet jump, but only a, perhaps a tenth of a second, perhaps worst case at two tenths. So it's two cars ahead is the leader. The car ahead is Elliot Boots. But Elliot Boots much to anyone's surprise, it's actually a lap back already after 19 minutes and 27 seconds. Coming round the Nemo racing berm again. And the lead now between Lutz and Ongaro goes down to 1.79, again 2.4. So at this phase, Lutz has found some speed. Now whether he's been, the interesting thing is, is that 
Boots isn't being dropped by Ongara particularly and isn't being particularly gained on by Look, so it looks like that at this point, Boots is a rebound. Oh, Angara's off! So Angara's gone. We've now got, I think, a change to the lead. Did, on, did Lutz get past there? Has Angara made a small mistake, or will he just stay ahead? No, he just stayed ahead. He got the, so now they are back face-to-face. -face, a small overrun there. And um, Lutz... So Boots got back ahead again uh, and unlapped himself. Now, oh, what's that in there? Is that Lutz has gone off? It is. Oh, and he's been put back up there. That's, gonna, that's a massive mistake by Lutz there when he had a chance. Didn't get much help from the marshal either, who just put him back down the bottom again. And that is a major let off for Ongaro. Um, let's take a chance to see that previous moment if we can. Yeah. Whilst we see how far behind Lutz is. So what? So we look ahead, the mistake is made by off on the left-hand side, and somehow he just managed to stay ahead there on Garo. So Lutz is 5.28 behind. But another mistake now, let's go back to live. They cut their first and second right together again on the step up. Because another mistake was made there by Ongaro through the uh, washboard section. So, oh, it's gone too wide again up on the bottom. So, oh, it's on again. Oh, Ongaro's had a nightmare lap. What happened there? Let's see that one again very quickly, please. So, already very close. For some reason, Ongaro has gone way too wide. Misses breaking point, comes back in again, sweeps across but hits it and then gets scooped up by Lutz. So Ongaro's had a really dodgy couple of minutes. I mean, Lutz has some bad luck as well. So we're back again and it's with Ongaro. Now, how, where is Ongaro in relation to Lutz? Because I haven't seen Lutz for a second. Where is he? Um, there he is, Lutz has a, has a nice little lead, so Lutz leads. Ongaro second, now we'll see the metal of the boy. No, 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 Ongaro, Ongaro, please. So Ongaro, up the main straight, turns right. Let's see if he can catch up Lutz. Out through the bullet turn, lands in front of camera two. And it's now down to Ongaro to show us what he's got. I'm sure he's had quite a bit in reserve as one of the back markers breaks hard to keep out of the way. It's Lutz you can see up ahead, and we are exactly, well, we're 15 seconds off halfway, and at this point, we all thought Ongaro would be winning by a lap. But Lutz is absolutely, and the other thing to point out is actually he's only 0.6 of a second ahead of one Carlos Canas. That car behind, that blue car, that's not a back marker, that's the third place. They're coming to the third stop. Oh, he's been a mother mistake! Oh, has the ice man broken? He's got to sit down. He's got a chance now. Think about it, Davide. You've got a chance to relax. Hold it down. Can you push? Because actually now he's in net third because Canas went past him whilst he was upside down the pit lane. So we're going to stay with Ongaro now and see what happens. Because the stagger will unwind. They are all pitting about the same time. So you will see Lutz going in and you will see Canas going in soon. Canas doing a superb job in his early runs with uh, the S-Works. Whereas... Ongaro looking fallible for the first time in several months. But the thing is, he has to be to gather himself and just do what he wants to do. I think there's a problem in the pit exit there for Kanas, actually. I think Kanas got tied up in the pit exit. I'm not totally sure. And that is the one car of Ongaro. Just trying to see where he is in relation to everyone else. Um, who's taken fuel, who hasn't? Looks... I don't think it's taken fuel. It's going a bit longer. Where is Lutz? Right, Lutz is now... Yeah, Richard, so they're both taking fuel. They're pretty much a second and a half apart. They've got... What happens is you've got boots in between them. Unfortunately, Kanas got held up in the pit lane during his pit stop. There's a very good little move there by Boots letting through. So first and second are right together again. Lutz and Kanas... Lutz and... Uh, Ongaro, Ongaro with Lutz just ahead on the uh, washboard section. And Kanas, very unlucky, got held up in the pit stop by someone else's accident in the pit lane and got stuck. And in net effect, he lost about three seconds. So now first and second, right together to go through the switchback. We are over halfway at the 2019 DXR Dirt Kings brought to you by Nemo Racing and Bullet. As we look fast, as suddenly Ongaro is having to work. Where's he gone? <laughs> so Ongaro had a problem in the dip there. We were waiting to come out. And the gap that was 0.9 of a second is going to go up. As Lutz almost loses it. But, sorry, as Longora almost loses it in his chase for Lutz. Having to push, having to push hard. He's now got a back marker in between him. And that is the uh, yellowy car. As uh, Ryan Lutz comes to complete another lap, we've got the 14 machine of Matt Lewis. Look at out the way, he knows what he's doing. But Longaro, 
isn't gaining. That that was a gain of 1.2 seconds. It was a problem that uh, Ogara had this part of the track last time. He lost a bit of time. And now he's playing catch up. And now he's having to push to the end. And of course, don't forget, they've not driven their cars at 25 minutes. They're five minutes longer into tyre wear than they've been before. Ongaro through the chicane. Just so you know, you'll see looks at the bottom of your picture there. And it's really a case of this time round, it was a fight, another fight, he didn't gain again. Looks pulled away with 500 to the second. So it's not happening as any of us expected. We expected it to be a drift off to the Associated Driving World Champion with the LRP motor. We didn't think the Agama driving American will be able to do what he's done, though he's lost a bit of time there. So that's got a bit closer now due to, I think, a little traffic. So they're now right together again. That lap, good lap. Was it a good lap for Ongar or a bad lap for Lutz? Bad lap for Lutz. 32, I know, actually both actually. 32.9 against 31.6. So Ongar put down a great lap and now he's right behind him. As another back mark gets out of the way, and the first two running together, 25, 26 minutes down, 19 to go. Looks now on a slightly different fuel strategy, just later rather than different. Oh, and Ongaro right behind him, coming through the uh, the switchback. It's the pink and blue car that is Ryan Looks from America. The orange and silver car that is David Ongaro from Italy, your reigning world champion, and your reigning champion of the last event held at Harper Adams two years ago. Up they hop again. Ongaro desperately looking to find a way. Ryan, Ryan Lutz. Ryan Lutz has looked quietly confident the entire time he's been here and certainly he's had a lot of support from all around the world. Really showing the way home. But the way home is still 18 and a half minutes away and all over the back of him. Ongaro pressurising the American. And this is the thing though, that the referees are watching. If you're going to go past, it's going to have to be clean. And in fairness to Ongaro, he's an exceptionally clean racer. Now in many ways, I'm wondering whether a fuel strategy pass might be the best way. The old-fashioned F1 way, go in, get a bit of clear air, put in two or three quick laps, and when you come out, even if everything goes well for the other driver, you're ahead. Because actually getting past him on this pretty much, you know, there are, and you see he's looking to get inside, knew he couldn't do it. So unless Lutz leaves the door open, he's going to keep getting bashed back. Now the next stop is probably due in about a minute they could probably go earlier, but I would say about a minute as Lutz gained uh, one second there because uh, Ongaro didn't want to hit him. So Ongaro, they haven't, they haven't got the headsets for all these discussions they have uh, in some events. It's all just the old-fashioned shouting at people. So Ongaro now needs to think about what to do. And I would say if I were he, I would take it two more laps, get yourself in the window for the stops, and then effectively give yourself free air because Lutz has been running a little bit longer. To, he's not going to save a stop. He's running a little bit longer. And then you can do a little bit of a, a chance to have a go. And if you don't get the point where you're about to get there and you lose space. That time round, another loss. Six tenths for Ongaro. So Lutz is putting it down now. 2.25 ahead. As Ongaro begins to have half an hour old tyres. And he doesn't know what they're like. Lutz happier and balanced at the moment. Still not even one accident ahead. Behind them, it's Kanas in third, dropping off study. Burak Kirch in fourth. Hal Figueredo in fifth and Johnny Skidmore in sixth. I'm not overly sure that Ongaro's still particularly happy with his car, to be honest. He's not done a lot for the last five laps. That last one was a 32-3. Possibly, he, what, he, what, what is happening is the car is changing during the 45 minutes. It's changing for Ryan as well. And he's having to change with it. And it may just be in a patch at the moment where he's working out what to do. How do I change my style to get the most out of this car? How can I start moving forward again? Whereas Lutz is a little bit happy with the situation his car is in at the moment. That time round, we have a lap time of 32, 3, 5. Yeah, there we are. 31, 7. Ongaro had a couple of unpleasant laps. And he, you always feel he was thinking, what am I doing wrong? How can I improve this? What am I doing to get the, the flow back in the car? As the level of grip changes, as my feeling of it changes, do I need to drive slightly different with the track? But he's now managed to gain better. There's an awful lot of back, of back marker action here, and this could be a chance for Ongaro, because it's going to hold up Lutz. Or does he do the F1 thing? Does he pull into the pits because there's, there's traffic? Round about, the traffic knows what's happening now. But Lutz is only, as you can see, about two corners ahead. We are now 29 minutes down. Surprised not to see him going in, but Ongaro putting the pressure on. Lutz hops out there, and he is down to 1.6 seconds with the 
Just about half an hour gone, so we're getting under two thirds of this race underway. Looking like they're going to get past. I think that may be Zantitin again. This looks like a better lap for Lutz, to be honest, visually. He may well have pulled out again slightly. And big, oh, oh no, Lutz has, Lutz has mucked up the entry, then he's lost the lead by mucking up the entry to the pits. Lutz loused the entry to the pits, and they're down again, so the overtake's been done on the pits. Oh, and a mistake by Ongaro, immediately. There's all sorts of other traffic around, but the first two are back out together. Oh, and he's gonna wait, he's gonna wait, he's gonna wait. He's gonna wait. I'm sure he's gonna wait, keep going. He has waited, great driving, great driving. Lutz knew that needed to wait, but that's not his fault there. The back markers, it's not their fault, they don't know they're that blue car needs to get right out of the way. That's Canassas. No, Canassas in the lead. That's why. Canassas has taken the lead, I think, in the pit stop kerfuffle. So Canassas, though he does have to go over pit stop, Canassas, the blue car, is now leading. It's Ongar in second. It's Lutz in third. That is the orange car. Canassas will come to fuel now and loses the lead. He led for a lap, though. And now Ongaro leads from Lutz. All because Lutz made a mistake coming into the pits about two minutes ago. Uh, almost compounded by the problem that uh, Ongaro had as they get round again. It looks like Ongar has managed to gap very slightly to Lutz. So now, can he hold it? Can he pull away again? He got the free pass effectively by a mistake by Lutz, not on the track, but in the pit entry. And now with another full tank of fuel and 14 minutes to go, can Ongaro gap the car immediately behind him, the pink and blue car of Ryan Lutz? We've got a moment in the sun because of various errors. We'll just hit one car, the other car avoids it. There are a lot of cars around who are finding themselves completely overwhelmed by the speed of these guys. It has been a masterclass by two drivers, and in fairness, Canas is not far off, who are now, again, nailed together with 14 minutes to go. Lutz. Just lost some time. He's getting screwed. I'm wondering, this, is, is Lutz losing rear grip? Are his tyres going at the back? I'm sure no one's feeling as well as he did after 31 minutes on these treads. Gained, actually, that last time, Ongaro uh, lost four tenths to Lutz. So, visually, it wasn't as it actually was. So, Ongaro leading, Lutz in second. Both down the washboard. Going back away from us now. On the step up, the Italian world champion in the orange and the silver car. The American champion, Ryan Lutz, in the pink and the yellow machine with the black wing. And interestingly, if you remember being here two years ago, David Ongaro won the event with initially two-thirds of the wing and finally a third of a wing. But he's got a nice big plastic one now that's not falling off, but he's having a lot more problems because Ryan Lutz, with 13 minutes to go, is saying, no, I'm not handing you this. I know everyone said we thought you were going to win. We know you're the world champion, but I've got other ideas. I want to win my first major race for my new chassis manufacturer. And it was, oh, that wasn't him. That was the, uh, the back marker crashing, not Ongaro. So Ongaro now suddenly a superb drive by Lutz. He's right behind him again. The gap is nothing. And Lutz gets a drive down the straight. Ongaro as well. They fly into the first corner, flip back into the hole. They're going to pop up out of the bullet now and now and sweep down underneath camera two. And the landing, but no, this now it's the time for Ongaro. Ongaro sitting on the apexes. Lutz can't get past them. They come together once and Lutz waited. Now they keep coming and going. Ongaro Kanas is sitting like a, a hungry shark waiting to pounce on these two just five seconds behind. So they do trip each other up again. They have to do the waiting game. We could see Kanas once again take the lead. Another car moves out the way. I can't even tell who it is. It's far too exciting to watch his other turn. Lutz, Lutz fires up the lane now having lost about four tenths in that one. But in many ways, you, much like it's hard to follow really, really closely in F1, it's not an aero race really, just because you are fast in different points. Another car is wound back in front of Ongaro, and I think that may be Neil Cragg, I'm not certain, because there's many yellow and orange cars, you know. And there's Lutz. Ongaro with a slightly better run there, I think it is Cragg, and Lutz actually made him trying to avoid things, has lost a couple of tenths. So, Ongaro, little orange flash, and the pink and blue flash behind them as they cross the line now, and now. And the lead goes out to 1.18 seconds, mostly because Lutz was getting a bit confused about how to get past the back marker, actually, and then let him through. And oh, that's a, that's a fishtail mistake. And as you see, that's two, three tenths. It's, that's it, it's all you need. Half a mistake, Lutz is back on him again. Now, the old adage was Murray Walker said catching was one thing, passing was another. And normally in one eighth night to race, that's not so true. But on this track, I think that's absolutely right. I think catching is one thing and passing is another. Because Lutz seems to be able to, and Ongar as well, they were able to get close, but actually getting past was virtually impossible. Ongar down the dip. 
fires up over the bullet jump. And there is Lutz. The gap was 0.91. Lutz is definitely quicker at that patch underneath the, uh, the camera, second camera position. Ongaro, I think, is a little bit swifter on quite a bit of the rest of the track, but it's kind of three tenths there in one or two corners against three tenths around the rest of the track. And Lutz hanging off, this very, Lutz is very quick also. Oh, and Lutz is very quick along the, uh, the berm. And he's, oh, that's quite, that's quite polite waiting there because Ongaro was already spinning before he got lightly touched. So Lutz is definitely going to win this completely fair. Ongaro looks up the inside, can he get it? Now he knows it's advantage. Ongaro this time breaks it down before they go back onto the washboard. Ongaro in the orange, looks in the pink and the blue. If just joining us, this has been a battle royale after eight or nine minutes where he thought it was a procession. Lutz and Ongaro have been tied together now for 27 minutes. They flip back over the line. Lutz and Ongaro. Oh, looking about what they can do, and oh, oh no, that, that was, Lutz didn't do that. And Lutz takes the lead, so Ongaro, we need to see that one again. Let's wait for a bit before we play it, though. Let's see how these next couple of laps play out. Lutz and Ongaro, first and second still. And underneath now, let's, okay, let's have a look at that replay now. So what happened there? There comes Ongaro, there is Lutz. Ongaro makes a mistake. Yeah, he, he, actually, it looked, he came across the bowels. It looked like he'd been tipped by Lutz, but he hadn't. It's entirely his own making, but luckily it landed and got going. So uh, a, he lost position, but no more than that. And they're still nailed together as we go further over 36 minutes. But now it is Ongaro who's a second down after that partial mistake at the one part of the track where he's been struggling, under camera two. And interesting there, whereas... Lutz has been good around the exit of the, uh, the berm. And, oh, was he going for fuel and changed his mind? I don't know. So Ongaro now, with Ongaro more, because he's just stretched the lead back out to about a second and a half. Lutz doing a fabulous job. Ongaro, and the two of them serving us up an absolute classic, kind of aided by the fact we've got a lot of traffic on this road. It's quite a short lap. There's, quite a, there's a bigger spread than normal between 1st and 15th. As Lutz goes through, these two need it. Pavot gets out the way, and it's kind of a moving chicane type thing. And they go over the fuel. Lutz gets it right this time. And Ongaro doesn't. Now, I thought he might have just gone. So it's, uh, it's even Stevens there. Already down and out has gone Lutz. And Ongaro now has got a battle on because that is the last pit stop. They're on the last section. They got seven and a half minutes. He's made a mistake, Ongaro coming in. And the, uh, the young Italian is fallible. And Ryan Lutz has found his. His underbelly, the weak underbelly. Perhaps it's just the car, the tyres have worn too much, but he is going to be something like five seconds behind now with about seven minutes to go. Well, exactly seven minutes, eight minutes to go. No, exactly seven minutes to go. Sorry, right first time. Seven minutes to go now, and the gap is four seconds. Okay, it's four seconds. Three seconds on Goris. So, because Kanas is back in the lead again. Sorry, Kanas is in the lead. On Goris and Kanas is, is pitting later. And I think that Kanas may actually come out almost exactly on Ongaro because he's about six seconds ahead of Ongaro. Ongaro's three and a half behind Lutz. But when Kanas comes in for fuel, he's leading at the moment. And Kanas comes in now and takes a very safe stop. I think that Kanas may well come out with or just ahead of Ongaro. And indeed, he does come out just ahead. So now it is Kanas who made a mistake, I think, coming out. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, but Kanas, I think, made a mistake. It's hard to tell up that far end. There's Ongaro. Is Ongaro ahead or is Ongaro behind Kanas? No, Ongaro is behind Kanas. So it's Kanas in second, who's ahead of Ongaro in third. And they're both three seconds or two or three seconds behind Lutz. And this is an absolute godsend for Lutz. Kanas from nowhere has gone and blown it. So right now that's released Ongaro. We'll have to save that for later because now it's a six minute chase. Kanas again had a chance, felt the pressure. But the net effect is 2.7 seconds in six minutes. Can Ongaro do it? He's been the class of the field. He TQ'd all six qualifiers. He won his semi-final. Of course he did. He led the first 10 minutes of this race like it wasn't even going to be a problem. But now he finds himself trying to chase the tall, affable, lanky American Ryan Lutz. And he has in just five minutes and 31 seconds to make up a gap of. And I will tell you in a second how far that gap is. The gap is... 
on your screen now at 3.24 seconds. So he lost a bit of time there. So it's Lutz and Ongaro. They won't be in the same shot because Ongaro's so far behind. Is this just the case? It was a few minutes too far for the setup of the tyres of the Associated, or is it just the case that Ryan Lutz has outthought Ongaro? Only been interested in the final the whole time, a bit like a wily old fox like Robert Bataille normally is, and decided what I'm going to do is not worry about the youngsters and their, their fun and their, their TQs, just get myself in position to win the race. He's always looked on the pace, but he lost half a second there, 31 28. That was the fastest lap of the race by David Ongaro, and to my mind, about the second fastest lap of the meeting on 40-minute old tyres. Now you're going to see the real skill of a world champion. Can he pull back that gap? It's 2.78 seconds. He's got about eight or nine laps, to do, about eight laps to do it in. Can it happen? Will Lutz make a mistake? Will Lutz crack? Ongaro goes round now. Was it again that time round on the lap? It was 32.6, they won nine. He gained seven tenths of a second. Ongaro flying now, trying to make up the gap that was his own making by the accident he had coming into the pits a few minutes ago. Chasing down Lutz. Ongaro up and away over the uh, Marxist corner and now up on the tabletop. I've not seen him losing anything. 41 down. Oh, he lost a couple of tenths there and he can't even afford that. You see that Lutz is not in the shot. So Lutz has already passed start finish. And the lap, no, it's gone. Ongaro's in the lead. Where's Lutz gone? Lutz had a problem. Ongaro's in the lead. What's happened to Lutz? Is Ongaro? No, Lutz and Ongaro swapped twice. L Ongaro had a problem. Lutz had a problem. Didn't see Lutz have the problem to lose the lead. So Lutz, I think, must have gone wide on the berm. Ongaro came underneath him. But then Ongaro uh, himself had a problem in the dip. And Lutz got back past again. So if you cut this race, it looks like nothing happened because they're still two seconds apart with three and a half minutes to go, but the lead has swapped twice in the last lap in a remarkable fashion as Lutz made a mistake and then got it back immediately as Ongaro fell into the dip here and the gap is back to 2.5 seconds with three minutes to go. So, coming round the corner, where is Lutz? Lutz is just landing the Marxist corner now. That is Lutz, you can see him, there he is. Lutz and Ongaro. Ongaro now came round the Nemo Racing Berm. There is two minutes and 40 seconds to go. They're in the same shot because they're that close. Lutz seems to have lost a little bit of pace and he lost seven tenths of a second. But it is now on a knife edge. These cars are basically worn out. And let's see what happens now. And you can see it's closer this time than last time. He only lands the Marxist corner as Ongaro takes off. Now, Garo can see him, but it's a zero mistake situation with two minutes and 20 seconds to go. Lutz being reeled in, but we do know there's a difference between catching and passing. Now, now easily in the same frame, not a stress to the cameraman at all to do it. And that lap round was a gain of about, oh, actually, Ongaro actually lost a tenth of a second. Must have lost it in those last couple of corners. Both went sub 32 on 42 minute old tyres. Will Ongaro get close enough to bite in the last two minutes? They are right together in what has become what we all thought would be a procession but has turned out to be a classic 45 minute final here at the DXR Dirt Kings. Lutz sweeping round, he's lost some time. Oh, and you can see the grips going. Ongaro having to control the slide. And now two minutes and one minute and 40 seconds to go. There are three laps, I would say, as the lead came down by just two tenths of a second. Lutz has to keep his head on, but more importantly, he has to make sure he doesn't get caught up by Ongaro, who's a little bit quicker through the camera turn there and over the washboard. Up and down. The lead last time was 1.59 seconds. It's no closer this time. 1.6 seconds it was. I don't think it's, I think it may, it may well have gone slightly back to Lutz with uh, two laps after. They're going to get, uh, they might get three. I think they're only going to get two laps. If they get three, it'll be by the skin of their teeth and they'll need to be swift. So it could be it's going to fall into Lutz's hand. There's only two laps for Ongaro to try and catch up, and he's 2.36 behind. It's probably going to take Lutz making a bit of a mistake for this to happen. So can we switch our focus to Lutz, please? So he will need to make a mistake in this last minute and a half for Ongaro to catch him. If not, we're going to see Lutz across the line for a truly remarkable victory at the DXR Dirt Kings 2019. They will get one more lap, so they're only at 44.30. They are 
Gonna get this lap and one more. Ongaro, 1.7 seconds behind. And as he fires up and lands, you'll see Ongaro taking off, but he's not been able to make up that 1.7. It's been that sort of gap for the last lap. One cost can now, he's only seven seconds behind that, and that's after a couple of accidents. So there goes Ryan Lutz. He is about to start his last lap. I'm just wondering, actually, if Ongaro is going to start his last lap. It's Ongaro. Ongaro has been caught. Lutz is your winner. Ryan Lutz from nowhere has won the DXR Dirt Kings. He's getting a lap of honour. The American with the Agama is going to take the win. Unbelievable. The tall man, car two, position two, has taken a truly surprising victory. Unbelievable. Coming under. He's just driven it off. Ongaro, couple of mistakes. Things went wrong. Lost by a couple of seconds, and that's all. Roots gets a whole lap to himself and has won the DXR against all, all. Heart, hearty congratulations from Ongaro. You've got to say that's well done as they drive the cars in. That is a remarkable feat of driving, it has to be said. So let's see if we can... Uh, is that on? So we're going to try and do a bit of RF fun. Okay, it's on now. You can turn it on now. One, one. Uh, make sure you get the output sound right as well, Paul. <laughs> okay, so uh, what a remarkable result that was. Um, a big surprise in the win there for um, cameraman. Can you make sure you can try and see me when I come out? Um, a great surprise there. We all thought it was going to be on Gara without any effort whatsoever, but the win has gone to uh, Ryan Lutz. And I now have to try and walk against the flotsam and jetsam of human beings who are walking the other way. After a fantastic race, let's see if I can find Ryan. Shouldn't be too odd, he's quite tall. And uh, just walking towards Ryan now. I will bring him out for a conversation. Not sure if we get a chance with Ongaro, but uh, obviously there's a all clear. He's taking the uh, congratulations. Let's see if I can uh, just grab Ryan. He's getting the congratulations, Ryan Lux and, and all the other drivers. An amazing performance. Obviously, the surprise is that it's not a win for Ongaro. Let's see if I can get uh, both our uh, drivers. Lots of cuddles going on down here. It's very nice. Nothing like a cuddle. And uh, what I'm going to try and do is I will. Uh, Ryan, if you could. Ryan, if you could just come out this way. Davide, um, this way, both, both come across. Let's, uh, let's uh, have a quick chat with our winner and our runner up. We put on a 45-minute battle royale. Guys, have we got the, uh, the camera over there? So we'll uh, start, I'll, sit, I'll stand in the middle, that's quite. Uh, Ryan, first of all, congratulations. Um, you have surprised everybody here. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the mouth is dry. <laughs> that was good. Um, when did you know you had a chance of winning? Because we all thought, oh, Davide, he'll be way and gone, and that's it. And he did make an early break. I actually was hoping before the race even started because I saw what tires he was choosing to run. And while we both run AKA, I saw he was going with the qualifying tire, the AKA Typo in clay. And I was running super soft long wear, zips in the front, double downs in the rear. So I knew my tires would be good for the whole run while I knew he was going to be on slicks for the last half. So I was just hoping that he'd get in some dust and make some mistakes and I'd be able to stay with him at the beginning. You got in the lead and then he made a mistake coming in the pits. That must be a nightmare. Yeah, I, I suck coming in the pits normally. So <laughs> it happened again. <laughs> but just got to stay with him, and it came out all right. New chassis, first big win. It must be really, really, really heartening. It's awesome to do it in buggy. You know, Nitro is the glory, right, Keenan? Uh, just to be able to do that and playing against the world champion here and battling for the whole race, that was just awesome. Not bad for an old guy. Brilliant. Thank you, Ryan. And now a quick word with Davide. Um, Davide, um, we're, you, know, you, you dominated the meeting all the way through. You got out in the front to start. I have to ask you, even though you drove a brilliant race and were brilliant, what went wrong? I think I made too many mistakes. Uh, also because uh, the tyre at the half of the, the race was maybe finished. But I tried to push uh, to stay with uh, Ryan, but he was so fast and congrats to him. 
it's, it, it was very noticeable. You, you were constantly changing your style, and, and, and you could still produce those quick laps even on slick tyres. I mean, how do you do? How do you manage to find those super quick laps even when you run out of grip? I think you have to stay on the on the right line on the on the track and not not go on the dirt. But uh, this race was uh, was okay. The car was good, and I want to thank all the sponsors for support, and I'm happy. You put on a brilliant performance. You've entertained us all, and that was a great race. Thank you, Davide. Thank you. Thank you. So, an absolutely surprising result from the DXR Dirt Kings 2019, but one of the most fantastic races we've been privileged to have as we sit around thinking that we're only going to have, you know, oh, an easy win for Davide Ongaro. But no, Ryan Lutz from nowhere has taken the victory for Agama, he's taken the victory for the United States. And in many ways, that's why we love Nitro Racing. We all sit around, I kept saying to um, Matt Guppy yesterday, you never know, you never know, it's Nitro, something can happen. Must admit, I did think that for DVE to get beaten, he needed to be beaten by circumstances beyond his control. And in a way he was. He was beaten by a very tall American who wasn't with his control. Thank you so much for being with us here at the uh, DXR Dirt Kings for the four days over Easter. Uh, my name's Nick Damon. You've uh, heard from Paul Bateman a few times. Yeehaw, Frank McKinney on the camera over there. I'm currently being shot by Ashley in time. Thank you to Scott. Thank you to Rob. Thank you to Matt, who joined us as guests during this event. And thank you so much to the DXR team for inviting us, putting on this event. And, and in three hours, this won't be here anymore. Um, until then, also thank you to Nemo Racing and Bullet. Uh, we are back as RC Racing in just about nine days in Manila in 48 degree heat for the first round of RCGP. Do not miss it. It is going to be unbelievable. We'll have Davide there. We'll have a number of other top drivers here as well. But until then, we'll say goodbye. Thank you so much and enjoy your racing and see you in Manila. <laughs>